when they do back and processing, everything goes down. Okay. And she doesn't. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five webinar of our COL Train to Alpha. I'm Ed Martinez, I'm the head of COL Premium. And of course, let me welcome everyone to this uh, live event that we have, of course, with two of uh, what we consider the pillars of our humble trading community. 
So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce first our Chief Technical Analyst, Mr. Juanes Moreno. Sir. Hello everybody, welcome to our uh, afternoon show. All right. And of course, uh, our next guest for this afternoon is our uh, uh, tireless coach who guides us every morning and every evening. Ladies and gentlemen, our uh, Senior Technical Analyst, and a senior coach in the Caleb Institute, Mr. Lawrence Lee. Hello, Lawrence. Hi, guys. Nice to be here. All right. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public show. It's available to all CLL Premium clients, members of our exclusive trading group, as well as the general public. If you have friends who are interested to watch, of course, feel free to share the links that you have so we can uh, help us pick the brains of our experts. So, as mentioned, we have a public show today. And to join us, uh, you, you can uh, ask your friends or your family to watch through YouTube. So we're under YouTube Live. Um, uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to use our Slido app, as well as uh, comment on the portion below, all right? So uh, if you log into Slido, you'll be asked to enter uh, the password, which is uh, hashtag TTA turns one. So TTA stands for Ready for Alpha. So for more information, let's watch this. Hi, I'm Jane, your premium partner. We want to make sure that you get the most out of the event, so we partnered with Slido. Slido is a simple audience interaction platform that will allow you to ask questions, answer polls, and engage with our speakers, basically giving everyone a chance to get heard. To join the event, first, open your web browser and type www.slido.com. Also, you may download the Slido app from the App Store or Google Play. Then, enter the event code. Enter your full name. And lastly, enter the passcode. question, you can click on the question tab, type your question in the space provided, and press enter. Your question will be submitted to us for evaluation. You may also vote on the questions that you think are relevant to you so we know which questions to prioritize. To answer a poll, you can click the poll tab and select your desired answer. We will let you know if the poll is activated. To view videos, click the menu button and select live stream to watch. You may choose to shift across the tabs when you need to. See? Very easy! We hope you enjoy and make the most out of the event today with COL Premium and Slido. All right, welcome back. Uh, I, I hope you were, you were able to learn how to log on to our Slido app. And uh, please ask questions. And let, let me remind everyone that at the end of the show, we will be awarding the most influential uh, participant in our web show, right? So if you have the question with the most amount of votes, you will win a special gift from COL Premium. And of course, if you are not able to watch this, it's also available in YouTube after the web show. So you can watch it and share it with your friends uh, for as much as you want, okay? So uh, again, uh, the special prize. So make sure you input your name and email when you fill out your Slido details so we know how to get in touch with you. All right, so let's get on with the show. All right, so uh, first let's talk about general strategy. So um, as I quote our, our dear chairman, diba? he always asked us when you see us in the, when we eat, diba? Paano ba tayo gagawa ng pera? Diba? So ask you this general strategy. First one is, uh, how do you think we can make money uh, out of this, uh, out of the current market conditions? 
Well, the current market is, is uh, slowly recovering. Uh, but the recovery we feel is not going to be uh, as intense as the way we want it to be. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see something that's going to be creeping along and we're going to see price channels move here. Okay. And that means that the strategy we're going to have to be able to use is every time stocks make a dip, mm -hmm. we're going to have to be able to confidently buy it as it comes sort of closer to support. Okay. And when it rushes back to resistance, instead of normally you chasing it at that movement, you want to take some profits of that in preparation for another cascade downwards. So you range trade this as prices move higher. Okay, so, but of course, we understand that the market may also break above that resistance or break below that support. So what's your advice for people who will see that? Because, of course, not it's not all the time that they will keep within that range, right? Yes, but you know, uh, we've seen quite a bit of stocks already climb up quite a bit in terms of the recovery. So we're not seeing stocks just begin a recovery swing. Right. Right. And that would mean that even if stocks or if the index breaks out over 7,900, mm -hmm. uh, you will still see a more gradual approach to this. So as prices move on, at least it tells you that the recovery will extend. Okay. But be aware that the channel highs might stop you in the interim and allow for another swing down before you enter. And that would be the range trade that I was talking about. Okay, right. Thank you, Manis. Lawrence, what uh, are you going to do at this point? <laughs> I think, I think the, the key thing here is that we're also locked into the emerging market um, okay. uh, group. So if, if you look at the global scale, uh, any anytime there's a, a positive or negative response towards the emerging market setup, well, maybe we're going to take some um, heat heat on that front, right? Uh -oh. So the good thing there is that the dollar, I think, is in a situation where it's kind of topping out. Mm -hmm. So anytime the dollar starts to um, weaken, so the dollar's been strengthening this whole time, the peso continues to weaken all the way to 53, 54 bucks, okay. right? Okay. Uh, if the peso actually starts to um, strengthen a little bit moving forward, mm -hmm. I think that's going to ease up on the burden that overhang of shares that's happening today. Okay. Um, and then it's going to be more attractive for um, the yeah, yeah. foreign funds to come back into, the, into our market. So um, that's something that we, we want to be looking at. The right. So you were mentioning overhang of shares. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So when you say overhang of shares, normally what happens is that, um, especially coming from 9,000, mm -hmm. a lot of people are still losing money ah. coming from that top, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very normal for you as you're breaking even. Mm -hmm. So markets rallied from um, from the 6, six 9 six. lows, right? Ah. And all the way up to 7, 9, where we are today. That's a 1,000 point rally, right? right. So, being able to make back that thousand points, a lot of people are now breaking even and they're like, right. oh, I, I just want to, when I look at my portfolio, <laughs> right? So I'm down, if I'm down, okay, from, from, the, from the peaks, you're down 20%. When you look back, you, you just made back 10% of that. Right, so right. now you're like, oh, why didn't this happen? Right. So that's why there's an overhang of shares today because those people are still losing money. So what you want is that you want those guys to start selling the guys who are losing money and then break even. You want them to sell to people who are now new to the market who aren't taking any losses and now are purchasing at these levels. All right. So that the overhang, you put a put overhang, you bigat sa puso mo kasi yes. lugi ka. Lugi ka pa. No awala, no awala. Pero in that same instance, Lawrence, iba kung lugi ka pa. So pag medyo break even ka, more or less ibebenta mo. Normal. Normal. Normally, normal. 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 Because you can see how your portfolio has suffered to the 30%, 20% down, and then you're kind of going to be a little bit of a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. We always say that if you get a mistake, you're not going to be a mistake. Okay, now moving on. Uh, Sir Juan, is, my question is, if diba, there's an overhang of shares, and of course, if you try to rally back the previous high, and most of, of the people will be breaking even, what could possibly change that? Because of course, uh, th this is a question we still get from our premium customers. No? Is a 9,000 market still possible? And if so, what are the necessary elements that we need in the market for us to be able to you know, break out of that uh, range? Well, in the realm of possibility, although I mean, that, that could be there, but I think the possibility is very, very small. Very small. Yeah. Yeah. So, and as, as Lawrence was talking about earlier, as the market is recovering and you've allowed people to buy from 6,009 yeah. to 7,001, 2, and 3, uh -huh. you have new people buying positions over here, and as prices extend upwards, right. these guys are now making money. Okay. Those who are losing are now being able to get to break even. Okay. And so, those guys wanting to sell, plus these guys who are entering can now make money. Right. creates its own resistance on the way out. And that's what may prevent 
the yes. market from going all the way that stretch up yes. in, in a very short period of time because we don't have that much longer for the rest of the year. So I guess following that ratio, we need to finish Mona in Mona Tao in the Google. Yeah. Another way to be able to you need to be or you need to be able to find overhang. Not going to turn over, but you need to find new support in the market that, okay. despite that overhang, are willing to take the market up to the next level. Okay. So right. there could be a catalyst that he was trying to explain, yes. cost, whether it's cost by the peso or whatever right. other market can generate more demand and can overwhelm that uh, over, overhang in supply, then you can have the market attempt to continue on. But like I said, we feel it's going to be cascading upwards and it's not going to be, you know, you're not going to see a rocket ship move from here. All right. All right, so moving on to our next question, though, when I see people in the gym or you know, in the gym, <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I walk down the street, or right, I see my kamag-anas, they always ask me a tip, or even when I see clients in the events, ano ba bilhin? So if I'm asking you gentlemen, what are the three stocks that you'd like to buy at this point? Let's start with uh, ones. Okay, um, well, there are, Three stocks that look interesting to me right now. I mean, although I, I know Lawrence is going to say this, he stole all my nice. I stole all my nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one that yes. came out of pretty decent formations are uh, Eagle. Actually, Eagle broke out. Right. Yes, okay. Eagle broke out of a nice pattern. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have uh, DMC, uh, DM Consumi, also pushed up quite well, and it looks like it's reversing from the downtrend that it earlier uh, come out of. Uh -huh. And even on the big caps, even SM, uh, I feel is also starting to be able to shape up. So I, I think for those people who are trading slightly mid caps to large caps, you'll probably get a good flare of uh, issues that you might be able to see into the next few months. So I think this will be an interesting trading uh, position to be in. Okay, let's talk about SM more. Well, this one. So yeah. now we're flashing a chart of SM to you guys. So uh, here we have the chart. So for our audience, what makes it attractive at this point? So how can you know somebody trade this kind of stuff? Well, the position you, you, you want to be able to look at is, uh, let me just extend the, the view here just so yeah, you can see. Here, okay. So you can see a very, very uh, long corrective cross uh -huh. in the market that fell down for quite some time. Okay. Right? And you can see that it's broken above what we call the 200 day moving averages. Okay. Right? And, and now you've seen this high here, come okay. up higher than the highs you have here. Yes. And that tells you that this downturn is finished. Okay. And also tells you that the trend has turned around and it's now moving upwards rather than just staying sideways. Okay. So okay. I think on, on even in the medium term, um, this might be a good position for you guys to be able to have, you know, look at the core side okay. and uh, participate in the way the market should be able to recover from this point. Out. So this looks very interesting. So you mentioned that the downturn has finished. So, ako, I think I bought when it actually finished. Well, so congratulations. <laughs> yeah. But is, it, is that the right thing to do? Meaning, is that the best way to tackle a stock that just has ended up in downtrend? Well, ideally, yes. I mean, okay. But the hardest part in all this is actually trying to identify that it's begun to turn around. Okay. I mean, buying a low no, or buying a, a what we call a trend reversal is actually a very difficult thing to do. Right? Uh, and for everybody who wants to learn how to do that, I promise I'll write you an article which we'll post soon yes. so that you can try to be able to get. But in a sense, oh. you have to bring out a condition that the trend tells you it's not going down anymore. Okay. And there are specific rules identifying that, especially by finding higher highs and higher lows. Uh -huh. And once you can identify it, as soon as you can identify it, you buy your stock during that condition. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Manis. How about you, Lawrence? What are the three stocks that you like? So I stole the other day. ones, right? So <laughs> um, me right now, my favorite is really MPI. Okay. Um, I think MPI is in a ex excellent position, especially the other day where it started to burst higher after the news of the the, the pull waves, right? So right. Um, this guy's in great position, sitting right at 200 day, I think, right now. Mm -hmm. um, but um, very much like EGI, I think that this guy can easily bust through that. and. Uh, MPI is really the, the thing I'm really looking at right now. Um, another thing I'm looking at is uh, this globe. globe. Um, the sentiment towards the telco sector over the past, uh, uh, over the, I think over the past, uh, the, this quarter, last quarter of earnings has been, I know, has been really good. So, um, me, I, I like, I like how globe has positioned itself, headed higher, and then now any, I think any range or pullback uh, coming back over the next few weeks. 
uh, these are opportunities to pick shares up mm -hmm. yeah. a little yeah. um, And the last one I think is uh, DNL. So DNL yeah. has been basing out significantly over the past few uh, months. Okay. Uh, but uh, as the earnings continue to improve, um, I think that this thing's based out. It's 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 about it's about due time for this guy to um, finally get some upward. Right. So any any it's so very in, inversely to let's say globe. If you look at globe, it's any pullback is an opportunity to buy. Okay. Versus DNL, where it's any any breakout would be an opportunity to buy. Okay. So uh, so because one is already trending. Okay. So you want you, well, as the magnitude continues to go higher, any pullback is an opportunity to pick up okay. shares on this issue. Where are there's the other one is basing. And all those people who wanted to sell have already sold. Any breakout means no. that there's new demand that's coming into the stock. Okay. So th that's why any breakout is an opportunity to purchase. What's the name? What's the name? Uh, I thought we, we have a very practical question from one of our customers who tried to catch MPI when it was undergoing that correction. So, in, in his exact words, Pare, what does name come out how every time I try to catch this, I break, I don't, like it, it, it sets another low. So now that it's fine turning around, the when he looks at the stock, major, and maybe we baggage next. Baggage, so yeah. How do you advise customers? Like well, a lot of this is, it's very, that's quite one of the most difficult things. It's my personality, oh, right? Okay. So what we always tell individuals is that the market doesn't know who you are, doesn't market doesn't right. care who you are. Right. So, if personality is a market at all, they're not going to be a They don't know who you really are. Right? <laughs> they don't know who you really are. Um, but I think one of the reasons why I, it's easier for me to um, encourage them to purchase yes. MPI today is really to turn around in terms of the, re the regulatory side. Right. So, part of that, I mean, we're a technical analysis show, it's a, a technical analysis group, right? right? But sometimes it has to be more than just. The price action because the price action is what got you into trouble in the first place right, right, right. so sometimes we have to supplement it with a little bit of uh, narrative and story and that's what attracts you to be able to get the confidence to go back into the issue right. today okay. so like the other day you have the the, the news on the the tollways and yes. and uh, be, them being granted already on the, on the tollway side right. so that means that there's a, yeah it's an arbitration right so there's a, there's a new fundamental change that's happening to the company that's why right. It's now attractive to actually maybe purchase this guy. Whereas historically, uh, the reason why it went down was because of the was the regulatory side. Right. You know, so as one of these things falling through that falls into their favor, just could domino and could all the other things. Oh, Plus, right. it's just super cheap today. Right. I guess the next question I want to ask you, Lawrence, is just to get the cat out of the bag. You 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 were mentioning Globe, yeah. and a lot of our customers, even up to now, are still so hyped up on the third tail code thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Why go and not a potential thing there? I guess the yeah. answer is. So, uh, if you're talking about the third telco, um, so that means that you're not talking about technical analysis here. Right. Okay. So, if you're not talking about technical analysis, that means that uh, the amount of of cost of being able to come in and, right. and build that third telco alone means that whatever, whichever whoever wins that third telco is going to go through bleeding over the next several years. Right. Right? right, and that, that doesn't even take into consideration that there are already two enormous players that are already right. in our in our industry today. Right. The reason why I think the whole telco sector today is 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 actually in a good position is because of the switching costs. Right, right. So it's going to be difficult for them to switch to that third telco because you don't you're not sure whether or not that third telco has any. Right. Has any you, there's no guarantee. Oh. Right. Okay. I always joke that I can't even switch to smart because they will allow up it. Oh. Right. Okay. So even even. Those those things. Uh -huh. So, um, so on on that side, because a lot of Globe's uh, revenues is now greater than fifty percent in data, right. where of course data is going to be significantly more uh, in terms of uh, revenue per user is going to be larger than than the text and the yeah, phone yeah, calls, yeah. right? So it's greater than fifty percent of their 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 uh, revenues. Today. Right. That this doesn't include all the things that are where they actually are locked up into. Um, into the plant, for so example. The other day, my free Spotify on mm. Globe expired. Oh. <laughs> right? Because I was there. So, first six months is free. Yes. Then what? And then I, I, know, I, I like my Spotify. No? Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like my Spotify. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> yeah, right? So, that means that right. oh, I don't have a choice. I have to, oh, no, on, oh. on Spotify, I have to renew on Spotify yes. Premium. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Uh, these are things that I'm actually paying extra. Like, I 
willingly paying extra because oh, I actually yeah. like the service that they're actually giving. And you tried it. And I've tried it. And since they give it to me for the first six months, yeah. I don't know. I get to use it, I get to appreciate it. And then when you take it away, <laughs> so I put it in sixty pesos. Right? So what's it's another about? So those are things that those are things that um, why we actually like we actually like the, the flow. Yes. I think even okay. PLDT I think will benefit as well. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with attempting to, you know, try or, or your hand on, on trading potential current telco. I, I think Lawrence uh, made a good point. Is first, it's going to take time for something like that to happen. And you think about it, you know, it's, it's a bird in the hand, or a promise for something which may not come. Oh, right. And um, if this bird in the hand is actually making money, and you see some improvement taking place right. into it, then you really want to be able to. At least majority of the funds should rather be there rather than the other one. And the second point I'd like to say is if you're trading those potential credit stocks, ask yourself what happens when the news really comes out. Yes. Uh -huh. Right? Because uh -huh. yes, they might be darting up very sporadically up, up, up and away, but the minute everybody knows who the winner will be, what will happen to the rest who didn't get it? Right. <laughs> you can just imagine. Oh. Maybe <laughs> right. And, and like <laughs> Mark <laughs> pointed out, the one who won it may oh. just suddenly leap up, yes. but now the realization is saying, I'm not going to be making money for the next four or five years, and people will start and well, you will say a major decline will come out right after that, which, which is very difficult to spot that we're starting. Yeah. Okay. So, know what you're getting into, and know you better know how to get out of this as quick as possible. Right? Okay. So. All right. So again, in interesting discussions, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to participate in Pick the Brains of our Experts, I think we have um, 20 questions right now. Make sure, please, to include your name and your email when you fill out our Slido profile so we get to announce who the winner is because we're awarding a special gift from Zero Premium to whoever gets the most votes in their question and the most influential participant in our show. So, uh, with that being said, let me uh, move on to the audience questions. All right, so um, let's just uh, have uh, a question from Mr. Frankie. Do you think? We will break the 7,900 or remain in the range of 7,500 to 7,900. Should we wait for the bottom range before entering? Gentlemen? Well, I'm, 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 op I'm on the optimistic track. I say yes. Yes. Uh, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, for those people who have not been able to buy, I'm, I'm sure wishing for you guys that it will go back to 75 yeah. right? because if not, then you're going to be forced to be able to run after the price at the higher higher value. Okay, so so, right? so I, I am, well, like I said, <laughs> the nice thing now is that you're in a market where you're seeing um, several movements that they're not all exactly the same. There are some that's pulling back right now, but yes. some are testing resistance. Yes. Focus on those, but please don't be looking at the stocks that are going all the way down to the previous low because right. that's the weakest. Right. We don't like the weakest, we want to buy the strong the strongest. Ones. Yeah. Okay. The strongest or the stronger ones. Okay. And so uh, even if it doesn't go back to 7.5 and it stays here, you'll get some opportunities to be able to pick up because there are some set of patterns that are uh, more likely brewing in this period. So okay. like, yes, I'm more optimistic that we do break and break. Right. Fantastic. So uh, let's um, go on to another question. Uh, Mr. Christopher John Berai asked, I don't imagine, uh, again, this is a technical analysis show, so Lawrence, I think you can yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. train one has derailed and crashed to the consumer <laughs> companies. Uh, what will be the effect of train two? And what should be our position and strategy in order to benefit from it? So I, I think the issue has been inflation, right? Yes. I think, I think that's, the, that's the one concern that right. uh, train one has, has really yeah. caused uh, uh, and, and burdened a lot of the consumer companies in, in the short term, right? I mean, not just consumer companies, but even the peso got got really burdened by by the rising inflation. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think that the end result of all of this, all of these infrastructure and uh, and, uh, and tax reform uh, issues, will actually eventually benefit down the road uh, mm -hmm. for, the, for the the economy in general, not just. Individual issues. It's burdensome okay. some today, but these these things will normalize, right? Right. right. So the thing that um, April was talking about when you were in one in, in our market outlooks was yes. um, you look at month to month a rise in inflation, mm, right. right? And you have to see whether or not on a month to month basis it's a one off or if it's something that will normalize yes. over time, yes. right? 
and the DSP is hoping that it can normalize these things over time. That's why um, initially they didn't want to raise interest rates over the first quarter of this uh -huh. year. Yes. What happened is over into the going into the second quarter of the year, trying to catch up on the I know, on the rise of rate, raise right. interest rates. Right. 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 Um, so in terms of the so that's that was the showing you guys what the what the problem was. But in terms of you know, how this potential outcome of the trade through, I think the market's already cheap enough to, that it's already taken that into consideration, right. which is right. the good part. Um, I don't. I think that in the short term, maybe our upside will not be as significant. So, mm -hmm. look, looking at uh, in terms of uh, our upside, we're fundamentally we're. I think I think April's target is about eight four to eight six mm -hmm. going into the end of the year. So right. we don't. We're not going to see the nine thousand explosive uh, upside in terms mm -hmm. of that you know, because of all these uh, regulatory things that are coming right. into play, the, the challenges, especially with inflation. But I think that moving forward, I think that. Uh, it's priced into the market. Like they already expect that these things will will probably be uh, approved and will probably move forward. So uh, I think that, I think that's where things are priced in already. Okay, I guess we have time for one more question. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? Um, Karina Yan, oh, from Mr. Angelito A. Hi. <coughs> Concerning federalism, if worst case scenario comes that hyperinflation happens, like how it is in Venezuela, so what will happen to our local currency stocks? Uh, I think I'll answer this one. Yeah, uh, uh, I actually drilled down on this one okay. uh, on the macro right. side because I worked right. on the uh, one of our member, uh, one of our guys that helps us on the macro side. Yes. Uh, we were talking about this uh, just the other day and. The issue there is really the external debt that they, that they yeah. really had. Oh, okay. So a lot of these, so Argentina, yes. Turkey, and, and all these guys, the, the, the dollar denominated debt of these guys was, was, ridiculously, was ridiculously high. So what they did was, instead of raising debt internally, they raised they raised debt from, from externally, yeah. external factors. Yeah. So all of these guys are really subject to the dollar, the, mm -hmm. the strengthening of the dollar. So they, they got completely destroyed, and then what happened <laughs> is that hyperinflation happens and all of these things. So um, looking at where the Philippines is situated right now, our external, we do have some external debt, but it's not as significant as all of these guys who are, yes. where the bulk of their, their, their borrowings were actually in the US dollars. In US dollars. US dollars. So, I think we've, we've learned our lesson yeah. from the 97 Correct. Right. So um, I think that in terms of what you're expecting in terms of hyperinflation, the actual, if you actually look at inflation today, the inflation numbers today, they're actually, no, it's actually the reason why we have inflation today is not because of external factors, but these are internal factors that we are trying to protect our agriculture and the know. So it's yes. rice and sugar. The cost of rice and sugar in the Philippines is, is significantly higher than everywhere else in the world. because it It's because we're, we're preventing the imports from right. coming in. Right. So a lot of these things will be, can be dealt with. Okay. Right, it's not a factor where it's it's a burden, something like the U.S. dollar. It's not something that's out of your control. Yeah. Okay. So if you really wanted to bring in the imports of rice and and, and, and sugar into this country, mm -hmm. we could just we we kind of no one go in it. But oh. you're sacrificing, of course, the the farmers, which is where, yeah. which is what we want to protect as well. Okay. Okay. So there's a balance somewhere in between there, okay. and it can be you know it can be balanced. So I don't think we'll get to the level of hyperinflation. Okay. <laughs> and I think BSP is not as behind the curve as yes. Venezuela, yes. right? So uh, they're trying to be more proactive. And if you look at the latest interest rates hikes, there have been 50 uh, basis points. Right. So they're really trying their best to uh, curb it. Okay. All right. So uh, that's all the that time we have for <coughs> questions for now. Again, if you have any more questions, feel free to engage us in the Slido uh, account. Make sure that you fill out your details, your name and your email. So we get to identify you when we award the most influential client. All right, so let's now move on to the show. Gentlemen, may I please uh, hand me these cards? Lawrence and then Wise. Okay, so uh, we're gonna play a game called Never Have I Ever. So of course, this definitely brings out memories from college, or does it, sir? That's far back. <laughs> 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 so I'm sure we all know how it works, but for those of you who are still not familiar with it, 
So I will ask a series of questions to our pillars, our technical experts, and they will either answer, I have, or never, okay? So, uh, of course, you can choose to explain yourself or not explain yourself. Right. I don't know which is better, <laughs> not explaining or explaining. Right. Okay, so let's have a sample question, okay? So, never have I ever invested in the U.S. markets. The answer is never. And okay, yes, I guess we have the point, no? Again, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment down below or ask it through Slido. Okay, let's have the first question is, never have I ever lost sleep because of my investments. Lost sleep. Lost sleep. A lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're learning from experience here. So, <laughs> gentlemen, can you explain? I mean, <laughs> I, I think everybody loses sleep over uh, In fact, I, I dream about charts, so even when I'm, I'm sleeping, I'm even thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh. it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, right. Uh, especially when you're starting. Right. Especially when you're starting, yes. when you have no system, and yes. and it's just like, uh, it's, it's, it's the same as just coin, it's just like a coin, coin for it. Right. You get that amount of I, I think also you, you want to have you want to build yourself to have a certain level of confidence in what you do, mm -hmm. and uh, if you're quite comfortable with your trading system and right. you know that you're quite prepared with whatever it is that you've done for the day, yes. that level of comfort will come back to you later on, and I think you'll probably be sleeping much soundly later on if you have that. Rather than you take a shot in the dark and you're praying to the high heavens that that your IRC or LTZ will. <laughs> So right. bring yourself to that level of comfort uh, and then you will speak much soundly and the profits will grow. All right, so I remember also one this you shared before that you never get into the trading day under there. Meaning before it opens, before the bell rings, you already know your trades. Yes. But of course, if you talk to other people and you, when you well, pass them through lunch, sometimes they have some ideas in their heads and they start trading. That's what we call ego. Ego. You can get sucked into a situation where you can't control because it just looks exciting that you can't close your eyes yeah. and say, this is not for me. I mean, I'm not prepared for this. Right. And instead, you watch a ticker so closely and say, oh my God, everybody's buying that except me and not drawn into it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Ego. Yeah. Or FOMO. Yeah. Or FOMO. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, 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 it's really tough because, um, especially when. Uh, in, in our situation, when we have, when we have traders that yes. actually participate in individual issues and they make decisions on the fly. Right. Oh. Um, what happens today is that a lot of what we do is our prep time is so much longer than actual execution right. time. So if, even if you notice, most of the time I write at e in the evening. Yes. And the reason why I write in the evening is because I'm actually reviewing what I need to do for the next day. Oh, so that's wow. why I write in the evening. So I'm yeah. hoping that at the yeah. same time when I write in the evening, you yes. guys can also prepare earlier. Because yes. if I write that at, in the morning, right. by the time you read it, the market's open already. Oh, so actually, I didn't give you guys enough leeway to be able to prepare. Yeah. So. Well, thank God for Lawrence. Now I can speak. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. OK, for me, it's a very particular example. I tried to buy a lamb in the same thing. And you know that day when you know the GDP was Announced it was lower than expected. It was only at six percent, I think, or um, yeah, lower than expected. Yeah. And uh, Ayala just turned from nine eighty to around nine thirty. Man, I really lost my sleep there. So again, the question is, how do you deal with stuff like that? I mean, Every one of those is a learning moment. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have my sure. journal. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I have my journal. All right. So moving on, let's ask our next question. Never have I ever earned so much in a stock but end up completely losing it. Losing everything you've earned. Wow, Rika. Hindi naman ako masyadong kumikita. Hindi pa ako masyadong kumikita na malamit. Oh, Rika. Namalamas naman ako. Okay. Can you explain or can we move on to the next question? I, I think everybody will go through that. I mean, I mean, 
if you don't learn that side of, of, of the market, then you're not completely equipped to deal with uh, these unfortunate events, right? right. Oh my gosh. And uh, you know, being human is part of what we have to be able to train ourselves to be able to, to counter. And then, yes, I've, I've made such a huge amount of money only to lose it even in the same day sometimes. Same so, day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Lawrence, how much? <laughs> percentage. I mean, percentage that's wise. a harder question. Percentage. <laughs> Not the amount. No, 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 yes, I talk about, about this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, yeah. even on the Kilum shortstops. Right. Um, this is one of the podcast on, on one of our podcasts was really I lost my pants in 2007, 2008. Right. Right. So I lost, I think, 90% of my portfolio in 2007, 2008. And, I, and the reason here's the thing, I actually, I turned 800,000 into 10 million in two and a half years. Wow. And I turned 10 million into 900,000. So that's, it's equivalent yeah. to basically bond on our account. I look back, I'm 100,000, but I'm not going to It completely bombed my, my portfolio at that yes. time. And it's part of, partly because I didn't have a system and didn't really understand what I was doing at that time. Right. Yeah. Right, so I, we always talk about um, education, why education is so important. Because yeah. if, if not for Juanis, is me learning from Juanis all those years, he shortcut a lot of the things for me. Right, uh, right. Sure. So it's these are the mistakes that he made, thankfully he made, that I didn't have to make anymore. Right? I didn't have to make anymore. Okay. Because he's already shortcut these things for me. Uh, right? uh, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm. I guess uh, my, my question to you, Juanis, is, how does one recover from such a setback? Meaning, you tried, you studied, you prepared for your training, you earned so much, and you end up losing it the same day. How do you, you know, just how? Um, I'm sure I'll tell you what I did once. I, 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 I shut my computer down. Okay. I took a three day vacation to Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> I stuck my head in the sand yeah, yeah. and realized, you know, what, what I had to, I had to learn that hard lesson and said, I have to accept it. Okay. Even when I landed, I couldn't believe that I lost that amount of money. But I had to, when I came out of there, I was more refreshed. My mind didn't dwell on the problem, and my mind was more on how to make money back and how to move forward from here. Right. Being a little bit more enlightened from such craziness that I put myself into. Okay. And that's what every loss has to be a learning lesson, like I said. Yes. All right. And certainly, Boratai helps a lot in trying to figure that out. <laughs> okay, so next question. This is a bit controversial. Never have I ever invested in a basura stock. Invested? Wait, invested? Invested. Keyword invested. Take it for what he needs. Everyone <laughs> bought it to a basura stock. So uh, participated. Uh, participated in a basura stock. So, yeah. sir, can you, what are these? <laughs> I'm human, right? <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> yeah. So I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you talk about basura stocks, um, I, it's not it's not even just one. I, it's a lot right. of times we okay. we because that's our that's what we do on a daily right. basis. Right. is really trade, right. and right. Um, sometimes we just try to take as much activity as we can in the in the right. short term. So mm -hmm. remember what I said is invested versus participated. These okay. two different things, right? Okay. Okay. Um, what we do is that we don't invest in. In, in penny stocks, right? That's not, that's, we, we, there's no way that I'm going to be able to hold this for six months to a year trying to see what will actually happen, whether the under. Notice he's using the invest word. Right? Okay, yeah, exactly. As against trade. Against trade. 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 Okay. So when we're trading, we trade the penny stocks all, right. all the time. We okay. participate, we try to take as many, as much moves in terms of in terms of magnitude that okay. that the stock is giving us, right? So if the stock gives us short-term momentum setups, we're, we're definitely going to be there. Okay. Right, um, but the thing here is that if you're going to ask if we're going to invest in penny stocks, mm -hmm. that right. one is never done. Right, never invest in penny stocks. But so. uh, th this is for, so I think it's a bit of a issue with my clients. So, yeah. since they're getting in there, nevertheless, uh, how do you suggest they do this? I mean, what rules should they follow? I mean, how is, is, is it possible for us to safely engage in basura stock taking? Safety, uh, probably not, because right. um, what comes with uh, those small caps is volatility. Okay. And if, for example, it's easy for you to make a 5-10% swing, let's right. say in a couple of days because of that, but you can easily lose that back. Right. 
Right. So with regard to safety, safety does not come with, <coughs> with small caps. Right. Right? Okay. Now, it is possible remotely that a very, or what you call basura or small cap stock can one day become a nice big company. Right. But it's very rare that happens and there's a long process of, of, of moving up before that actually happens. Okay. Right? So I think what you have to do is really know what your technical conditions are yeah. before you buy them right. and know your size. Because the issue might be so small. For example, you want to toss one or two million in a stock that only trades, let's say, five million in a day. Oh. You buy a million pesos out of that, and you're one fifth of the entire market. Right. For you to right. get that right. and sell it tomorrow, exactly. you'll probably dump that easily five percent downwards, and you'll be the influence on the downside. So right. you got to know yourself. You got to know your technique. Okay. You know, if you're going to be doing that, right. that way you have a parachute and you need to pull it. You know how to pull it. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. I think this is the last uh, con. Controversial question because we've noticed also in uh, social media or in other channels that they like to post their games. Na huli ko to, ito, okay to, this is a good stock. But as they take a screenshot of their portfolios, naka naka redact, naka mura yung ibang portfolio nila and just highlighting the the winner. Yeah. Of course, in part easy talk about these things, but. Have you ever had this experience where you spoke to a person about a stock that you bought successfully, but their entire portfolio was actually losing? The entire portfolio was actually losing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm also guilty of this. But, yeah, sir. Okay. No, I, 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 um, I, I don't see that because I'm, I'm kind of an open book with the way okay. I do things in the right. and, and my trading principle, uh, you don't want to be able to, to do that because uh -huh. I feel that if you're, a, if you're a trader who's just learning how to do this right. and you start this with a sham and you're not being, <laughs> you, all you're doing is fooling yourself. Yeah. Right? What are you here to, Are you here to make money or are you here to impress other people? Yes, yes. Right? I mean, I'm here to make money. Right. And I'm not here to impress anybody else because that's not going to make any money for me. Right. So what, what's the whole point? Now, if you're one of those who'd rather impress people with what you do and you know, say redact your portfolio, yeah, or your portfolio. You show the winners and not the losers, <laughs> uh, I don't know I mean, what kind of trader you'll end up being there. But I guess for me, it also tries to give you some sort of validation that they're doing the right thing. I mean, that's, I, mean I, think, I think that's the reason why you want to tell people about the good trades that you had, right? So, for, like for me, I'm just starting out with uh, all this trading, and I want, of course, to feel good about stocks of the <laughs> <laughs> I'm only human. <laughs> so there, for me. So Lawrence, uh, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> actually, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, sit here and lie to you. This never happened, right? right. Um, I mean, I, there, when I look at trading today, quote unquote trading today, um, Trading isn't about making money on one stock and, and right. hitting the jackpot on one stock. Right. Right? So the best traders I have on the team are those guys that continuously can replicate things that the trades that they make every mm -hmm. single time, every single time that they right. see it. Okay. It's not because they got lucky once and then that was right. it. Right? right. So um, for me, it's not about the the actual profitability. So when you talk a look at profitability, profit is a byproduct of what you're doing every single day. Okay. Right. right. So it's being able to replicate these trades over and over yes. again, rather than right. focusing directly on the P and L. Uh, right. right. So whenever I'm whenever I'm looking at whenever I'm working with traders all the time, it's are you making? So he'll come to me and say, we always have a what we call BWT, best and worst trade uh, over a week. We do that every week. Okay. So whenever I look at their best and worst trade, sometimes they'll come up with a trade. My best trade was this stock that I bought, and then uh -huh. it got. Uh, Upgraded, it's up twenty percent, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I look at him and says, "This is something that I needed you to be here, or is that you just got lucky on the trade? Oh, this is a trade yes. that you can replicate, yes, yes, right? Yes, right?" So sometimes we get so 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 engrossed with how much we made on a specific trade that right. we don't realize that I could never have replicated this trade at all. Oh. I don't know when the stock's going to get upgraded. Oh. So for me, it's a bit luck. Right. Oh, oh, but it can't be luck, of course. And luck yeah. is always great, yeah. right? but nice it's not something it. I cannot bank on. Right. right. Especially when you're going to do this all like this is over time. 
Am I going to bank on getting lucky? What's there's just might as well it's equivalent of going to a casino, right? So, um, for me, the you know I don't I don't talk about it. and not anymore, right? I don't I don't go out and, and check out the whole with or whatever it is. That's not you know that's not I know. But if you're asking whether I've done it before, of course, <laughs> of course that's happened. <laughs> we're, all human. we're all human. We're all human. Okay. So last question. I think uh, we've solved the necessary qualifications for this question. So not here, so. Yeah, so <laughs> last question. Um, <coughs> never have I ever used a broker other than COL Financial for my local transactions. When I was starting, guys, <laughs> a long time ago, I. I actually started with BPI trade because the opening, the account opening for COL was 30,000 pesos. I only had 5,000 pesos. So guys, I couldn't afford COL before. But now, it's only 5,000 pesos. Fantastic. That's not true. We never had 30,000 pesos. <laughs> <laughs> See, seriously, tell me who that agent was. <laughs> the CEO of family way back in 2001, but they could afford it, honestly. So I went to BPI and then they, you know, after like a week of account opening, they opened my account. So yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lawrence. Lawrence. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I, I have, the reason why I flipped yeah. is because I actually don't have an account with CEO of financial. Oh, it's because, because you're not you're not you're not you're no, 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 I am not legally allowed. Cause I actually don't yeah. work for. Sorry, guys. For those who don't know, I actually don't work for COL Financial. Right, right. I work for City Securities. So, so you, COL Financial okay. is City Sec Online. I work for City Sec offline. 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 So I work for City Securities. So my account's actually with City Securities, not COL. But yeah, so that's More that's why yeah. you know, it's actually it's actually this. Right. Just I mean, yeah. My regulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the all the time we have for the never have a ever. Thank you, gentlemen, for participating for that uh, industry exchange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's move on to the next part of our show. Of course, we've asked our members of our growing trading community about the stocks that you want to talk about. So we have collected them, and uh, we have them here, and we ask, of course, our technical experts to comment each and every stock. So we just do this uh, one by one. So uh, are you ready, yeah. gentlemen? All right, so let's flash the screen right here. So first, top of the list is uh, Metro Bank or MBT. Uh, Mr. Wise? Well, uh, I, I, Metro Bank has, has had a very depressed situation in the last few months. Okay. And uh, fortunately, in August, that it's managed to seemingly turn things around. Yeah. And, uh, you can see in the chart there, it's actually been able to break over the downtrend line and yes. it's now cascading a bit sideways, trying to get a little bit more leverage on, on the price. Yes. Um, so I think we can hang on to this level right now and it should be on its way to try to be able to make more recovery. So I'm quite hopeful that we'll probably, it would seem probably the worst for Metro Bank. Okay. And uh, um, that we'll probably see a little bit more sideways, but eventually an upward will come out of this. Okay, so. Uh, Given this chart, no? so when do you start buying it on it? So, I mean, right now? I, mean, uh, I think you can already start. You can do a gradual purchase in place. Yeah. Um, uh, like I said, since I don't think that you're going to go back to your July lows, uh, if you want, you can enter with a light position. Uh, as prices continue to, to slide a little lower, maybe yeah. you can add a little bit more and put yes. a major stock on support, maybe closer to 70. Yeah. I don't think it will be like that. And as soon as you see it start resounding, then you can add more as you feel more confident that the, the recovery is starting to be able to send it to us. Right, and we talked about buying. So how about the potential resistance here? What's your target for the um, piece of short term? Short term, this can go all the way back to about 80. 80, yeah. okay. Uh, moving on to the next one, we have uh, MBI, Lawrence. Hello, Matalaya. <laughs> right. Um, MPI is just broken up 200 day. Okay. So that that's a critical juncture juncture for me, right? 
So, sorry, like, no, sorry. sorry about the ends. Why the 200 days? So, like, remember we were saying break even point? Yes. So, if you look at the 200 day of uh, EMA, uh -huh. 200 days is essentially 200 day, the past one year of trading. Okay, right. So, right. Right. Um, when you're looking at over the past one year of trading, that's the break even point of the individual stock. Okay, right, right. right. So, what's happened is that over the past year, people were breaking even, we were still losing money like four or five days ago. Right. People were actually losing money on, on MPI. Yes. Today, finally, their portfolios go from red to green. Okay, right, right. right. So right. normally, we would be hesitant on, on asking them to, but I normally would see it as resistance. Yes. But this guy's clearing resistance. Today, it finished at 5, 554, I think, yes. Uh, yes. as it closed today. So this guy's, this guy's trying to make its way higher, right? Um, you do have to take into consideration that there might be a uh, uptrend channel that's, okay. that's, that's showing up. So you might see some resistance showing up in the short term. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the fact that this guy can clear that, that okay. uh, 200 EMA is, is a significant, uh, significant, mm -hmm. um, significant up, uh, showing significant underlying strength. Right. So uh, I mean, I'm still happy that this guy's, this guy's the strongest stock, one of the strongest stocks in the market. Okay, so Lawrence, given that you've mentioned that it's gonna go, it's likely going going to go through the channel. So, what time would that happen if it goes down to five? Yeah, five, no? yeah. The, the the five oh six, five. right? Yeah, five oh six. Five, five. Well, right now it's five oh six, right? So okay. at the five buck level, um, okay, right. it could just easily cascade up and down going right. forward. Uh, but ideally, if the most ideal is that it stays above that five thirty five level, which is two hundred EMA. So you want it to stay, if it's really strong, it's not going to go back in. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. So next, Sir so is how about uh, Bloomberry? It's the third stock that they want to ask. Bloomberry. Well, um, unfortunately, uh, being into the gaming sector, mm -hmm. was, uh, we, we've been hearing a lot of uh, talk around town about yeah. how potentially someone from a different country wants to climb down on uh, people using online gaming, online gaming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and because of that, that they did uh, hit a, a particular sector, which actually before that announcement was actually doing pretty decently well. Right. Right. And I understand the earnings growth for them was still relatively good, yeah. but now prices have fallen back to the previous low, just below it, just a little bit, and managed to recover. Uh -huh. I don't think it's out of the woods just yet. Yes. And so I think we may need a little bit more time to see if it can hold its ground here um, above that nine test marker. Mm -hmm. And this really needs to be able to reach itself over 10 before it starts to show us that the coast is clear to be able to enter. So I would probably be quite hesitant in buying this right now. If you do, it's gonna, it, that takes a considerable amount of risk. And there's still a potential that you can still see a new low with that thing as well. So uh, I would take a little bit more time to wait. But one is, what about people who are already in Bloomberry, probably around the 14, 13 Vesa area? If they were in there, I don't think they were in there for any technical reason. Okay. Because the technical reason. They don't easy to Anyways, you know, sorry. Let's talk about that. <laughs> you know, trading, trading is you being a driver in your car. Okay. You can put your two hands on the wheel and take control all okay. the time. Because the minute you're driving and you let go of that wheel, you're bound to crash. Okay. Right? And mm -hmm. crash once, twice, or three mm -hmm. times until your luck runs out mm -hmm. and you're not going to be in this game much longer. Okay. So if you made a mistake and you still have not pulled the trigger to exit, mm -hmm. that means you must not be stuck there for dear life. And no matter what I say, you're going to be in there no matter what. Okay. So uh, m my suggestion is that if you're still in there, Watch your lows. If it breaks it, then it's time for you to call it quits. Look okay. first for something else that's moving that might be the best thing to do or even faster to recover your money. Okay. And if this finally shows some technical strength, you can always jump back inside the there and it can always be a good option for you later on. But of course, we know that hindsight is 2019. If we could turn back time, what would be the sales in this year? <laughs> and you're really trying to tell me what, what I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not buying into Bloomberg, but nevertheless, we, this is a common question we have on uh, so our Once a growth between 1350 or 13 was the exit strategy. Okay, I thought we made yes, great when it yeah. ended at the, the yeah. upturn. Yeah. The blue line. The blue line. Blue line. Just said it. The blue line. Blue line. All right. Blue and you line. know what? And that's why, looking hindsight, you said, yes. when these sell triggers actually happen, yes. I know at the time, especially for those who bought it near the high, I know it might feel painful to exit. Yes. Right. But you'll see what happens later on when it goes all the way so much uh, deeper. 
that the you know okay it hurt you but it only hurt for a small amount <laughs> now it's still hurting you every night you <laughs> still can't sleep and the deeper it goes the harder it is to press the sell button because you're going to say I'm bothered right. by it, but I even bend it on your and if I do you're probably saying that my god I might look like a fool if this turns around now and I'll be right. riding it all the way to nine bucks oh. right, so it becomes much harder so make the hard decision early so yeah. it doesn't cost you so much right. and then just wait for the good timing essence and the the sound technicals to really get you back in there. Right, so for now, we're yeah. down on the night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, along those lines, I just want to add something yeah, yeah, along, yeah, along those lines. Just, um, <laughs> I, have, I have individuals that, that have asked me opinions several years ago yes. um, whether they should sell uh, EXP. Yes. And then what happened was uh, very recently, uh, one individual called me and said that uh, the EXP went up like 300%, right? right. Like, this right. Is the, like, that was like last year. So. so um, someone called me and said, I know about an EXP, it's up 300%. Yeah, congratulations, you're still holding it, congratulations. Yeah, I'm What? Yeah, so I mean, it means that over the past several years, they have to carry that burden of, of right. being trampled by, by these issues, right? And let me guess, up to today hasn't sold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lucky <here. laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on to the next slide with Lawrence, let's talk about Mega Mega World. So uh, Mega World uh, was the was the primary guy to take a beating based yeah. on the based on the, the the quote unquote news or rumors that um, the Pogo will uh, there can be clamped down on the Pogo, right? Yeah. So um, it, it broke. If you wanted it to stay above that uh, that blue diagonal line, the the, the, yeah. the dotted line now that, that it's been broken yes. um, several several days ago, but things broke down. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's going to be a large range moving forward from five to you know. The, I, I hopefully it will not we won't make it all the way back down to four twenty, uh -huh. um, and it'll probably consolidate above above this four fifty level. So ideally, you want it to consolidate between four fifty and five uh -huh. uh, in order for underlying strength to really show itself. Right. But if this thing breaks the 450 level, that, yeah, that 420 yeah. level is definitely yeah. in play. So um, for those who are holding Meg, you guys have to be careful of what I you know. So, but uh, they did, there was news today that they, they signed a deal with uh, JP Morgan oh. uh, for a big uh, landmark project in uh, uptown Manipasho. Uh, so whew. hopefully <laughs> we'll have some rally retreat going into tomorrow. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, I think you have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to be a little more careful because you're basically 50 50 at this stage in terms right. of risk reward, right? right? Yeah, so yeah. 450 to 5 and then 5 to 420, right? right. So you're going to be a little bit more careful. Uh, All right. It's all thick today, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Sir Wines, how about uh, Ayala Land with uh, Abby? Okay. Well, um, Ayala Land has actually shown uh, its uh, dominance in the property issues. I mean, I know a lot of property stocks have, have uh, felt the weight because of rising interest rates. But I was quite, you know, I was pleasantly surprised that Ayala's uh, recovery was actually pretty decent. Uh, mm -hmm. um, coming from that low that you saw in July all the way to where it rallied back closer to 45, uh, sorry, 43 pesos, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, um, it's moving up into an upward channel right now, so if you're looking for a potential entry, you want it to be able to come closer to the where that blue line is, mm -hmm. what we call the uptrend line, and see if we can hold on to that level mm -hmm. and uh, just go ahead and, and take it one step at a time. However, since we've gone to two or three stretches into a rally, there is a wider chance that it could be that we might need a wider consolidation from this point on. So. Just be a little careful. Also, major high for Yala Land stands at 47.50. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying it closer to 45 to 47.50, doesn't give you too much upset. Right, right. That's right. So uh, I think in this particular case, unless you get a nice bigger pattern in the bottom, pulling prices away and making your upside a bit bigger, right. that maybe you might not see too much of heavy demand coming at this end of it. So wait for this to, to pull back. But uh, I'm still quite fond of this, and the reversals are very to the trend here as trend. Oh. I think we've talked about this before on this one, but I, I guess uh, for the purpose of our audience, what we mean by a long reconsolidation at this point, meaning that it ended its uh, downtrend. Mm -hmm. Now, it, are we surprised that it's okay, let's, doing such let's, a... Let's use the, right. the, the example Lawrence gave you earlier mm -hmm. when he was talking about uh, overhang and yes. supplier. 
So since you're coming back to an area where previous major refineries from Ayala Land were there, there are some people who got stuck at that particular price. And yeah. you need gradually to get these guys out, convince them to sell, and convince new people to come back mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is by keeping prices pegged mm -hmm. to a certain range. Right. If the guy see that Ayala Land starts to consolidate here, the guy waiting to sell at 47 is say, and so you convince more of these people to sell, it picks up into a pattern, new money comes in at the lower price, and eventually it gives you a good, good move for a slingshot move about that range. But I think that may take a little time. Okay. All right. Okay. Lorenz, so that meant that I'm having the first part of the quarter, but Senorada Mining Corporation. So Semirada made, made a huge move earlier uh, in, in July, right? So in July to August, it made it all the way up to the 3292, uh, 32 and 33 level, 3290, 33 level. Um, and if you notice that it, it really bumped the green line, you see that it's really evident that the 200 day really was really the resistance point there. Yes. So what happens is that if you're coming from 2750 and then making uh -huh. all the way to 32, 33 bucks, that means that there's 20% that you've just made back, right? right? Um, and normally when you see that kind of move, that's very, you will really take money off, you will just really close the position already at that time. You break even, I'm down 20%, I'm breaking even, I'm really taking money. That's what happened here. So what happened is a lot of people were taking money at that time and then all of a sudden you still see, you still see some uh, overhang coming, coming moving forward, right? So now it's found its way onto the blue line, which is a support level, and it actually bounced from there today. So it's up significantly today, I think about three and a half. Three and a half percent today. So, but that thirty-two ninety-two number, the green line, yes. isn't going to go away, right. right? So, what happened is that you go from thirty-two, thirty-three bucks, all the way down to twenty-nine something. That's another ten percent down. <laughs> so, as if the ten percent you rally again, another 10, 10, 10, 17 percent, people will start taking money again off the table, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so, in the short term, I think that that green line is going to be an overhang, but. I think that if, as long as this thing bases out over the next few weeks, um, I think that this guy has, a, has this is something that you really have to watch because a break above that green line, you might actually have some velocity afterwards. Okay. But you still, like, like alongside what you wanted to say, you, you're still gonna, it's still going to take some time. This guy's not going to run away. Let me, let me add, um, one of the things uh, as coming from what Lauren just said, uh, when you're looking for a stock that's starting to turn around, one of the things that you want to see whether your stock is a strong pick or a weak pick uh, would be how much of a pullback does the stock bring in. Okay. So in a case like this, it's, it's drew, it drew back quite significantly off the high, mm -hmm. particularly that major resistance. Right. So if you're giving the opportunity for somebody else to buy at a cheap price, and even comes to rally back towards your previous high, and you're giving them the ability to make good money, they will take that money. Right. So that's why if you see a stock make a reaction, and the reaction is very light from the resistance yeah. area, and it doesn't give the guy who sold there the ability to buy back so well, right? right? And, and make do that profit taking maneuver all over again, right. it has better chances of crossing over that resistance on the next swing and creating more of an uptrend. Right. So that's why I think Lawrence, when he talked about Megworld, he said, if it had only fallen where it is right now and it recovers from that, that's a good thing. But if it falls all the way back to 425, that's not a good yeah. thing. And this will probably put that's back itself off. as well. So watch your retracements. If the retracements are very light, that's a strong indicator for your stock. And get ready to hop on that as soon as you can. OK, all right. Mr. how about uh, DNL? All right, uh, I think uh, Lawrence talked about this earlier as one of his nice picks. Yeah. And uh, the reason is very simple. You have a downtrend which ended. Uh, it's now starting to be able to, to channel up, although it's taking a little time to be able to take whatever overhang supply out at this particular point. But it has not broken over the 200 day yet. So while it's still down there, do expect more choppy movements for the stock that channel more likely persist. And if we can see it break about the 200 day or the previous side, which is about 1080 or 1090, right. then we'll probably be able to see something uh, a bit more faster moving into the day. Okay. So try to buy just near the low side. Okay. Near the blue line. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Lawrence, naging ano na to eh, naging adjective na to eh. Mga F gen ka. This is the first time F gen broken that green line in forever. Ah, okay. In a long right. time. In a long time. So not forever, forever. Yeah. Using, uh, <laughs> figuratively. It's figuratively. It's 
this guy hasn't broken that green line in, in oh. such a long time. Yeah. It means that people have been losing money. Like the why it's an average is people have been continuously losing money on this guy right. for an extensive period of time. Right. All of a sudden, clears it. That green line's clear. That means that all of a sudden, people who have been breaking even all these years, losing money all these years, now for the past year, boom, profitable na kayo. Oh. That means that something, and, and, and there's underlying strength that's coming into the individual stock, right? right? And this was after the, no, this was after the EDC na, na privatization, yeah. right? Yes. So the privatization is that, that gap, that initial gap, eh? right. about the, initial oh. red, the, the big red candle, that's the EDC gap, eh? yes, right? Yes. That means that after the gap, prices pulled back, somebody came and supported the stock, right. and now it's shooting higher, oh. Oh. right? So right. these are definitely fantastic signals for, for FGEN. Right. Uh, I know that uh, fundamentally they still think that it's cheap at this right. stage, so that's always going to be on the on, on in favor of, of FGM. Right. Uh, and I think that part of, partly maybe because of those people who have sold in EDC mm -hmm. have switched to FGM. Right. 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 So that's actually really really good. Whereas before, if you if I have to pick between F, FG and EDC, I only pick one or the yeah. other. Right. 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 We privatize one. I, I still, if I think it's still cheap, yes. So I think that this bodes well for the favor in favor of FGN. Um, I hope that they can clear that red line, the the, the red resistance line, the horizontal yes. one, at around seventeen forty. Yes. Right. But if that thing clears it, you actually might have some significant legs for this move. Right. So I, I, this is one of the guys we're keeping very close watch on. All right. It's also nice to know that. You know, normally when <coughs> bumper stocks like this move, and you see several of them moving together, yeah. that puts more weight into their advantage. Oh, yes. We also notice, aside from first gen, that first Philippine holding yeah. is moving the same way. LTZ also moving ah, the same yeah. thing. And that helps because they tend to move together. That's right. We've seen that many times before, so that, that adds to the plus side. Because they normally <laughs> go down together. And <laughs> <laughs> They go down together, they cover together as well. Yeah. But in this case, uh, rising tides raises all the dollar oh, ships. Well, <laughs> sometimes you have, okay. to look at it, you have to look at it like this. Let's say if, if FGEN is moving. If I don't want to use FGEN, sometimes it's like that there, right? So normally that's why even um, a lot of the Ayala stocks move together as well. Because yeah. if Ayala land goes up, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Sir Juanes. Yep. Jolly me. Uh -huh. oh, I was looking at this for the longest time. It dropped a bit, but I did not buy it. You know, when, when I was uh, when I was <laughs> coming towards the the, the half of the, uh, the end of the first half, uh -huh. Jolly's position wasn't really looking very nice. Uh -huh. It broke down from a uh, descending triangle, right. lurched down. But just the, of course, we we understood that the threat for Endo was coming yeah. and. Uh, potentially uh, the rising prices, particularly right. for soft drinks because of the, the, of the train yes, uh, yes. being affected. And uh, it, it was a dark time, if you like, for the <laughs> majority, but uh, the earnings came out quite surprising. Right. Uh, I was just talking with our head of research the other day, and she was, uh, she was quite happy to see the results for Jolly. Right. Right. I think the charts reflect exactly that. It looked like a, a market that was taken by, by surprise mm -hmm. and now left without too heavy a position. And because of that, and now they started buying back, and that's why the channel has reoriented itself back to the upside. But like we talked about earlier, channel will control the ranges, so now that it's making reactions closer to the low, we, we want to be looking for opportunity to buy this okay. to the support. So okay. that looks quite healthy now. All right. Lawrence, how about uh, S&PH? Uh, S&PH is probably the only stock that didn't really drop since January right. this year. Okay. Um, so if you look at it, it, it's just a big range from 32, 32 bucks all the way to 39 change, 39 50. So for those of you who are holding, for those of you who are holding SM Prime, congratulations, your portfolios didn't suffer too much. Uh, but at the same time, you're probably closer to the higher end of the range. Okay. Right? So um, one of the reasons why uh, we really think that, that uh, it's going to be difficult it's going to be creep more so, we call it creep, but incrementally going up and it's going to be choppy going up in the index is right. because one of the heavyweights really didn't fall, right? Oh, right. So okay. the margin for, even if the index fell a lot, the one of the index heavyweights held its ground. The bottom. That means that at the same time, you're also seeing this guy without really any reason for, 
for to, to go vertical. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you're buying it today closer to the to the 39 level, your upside is very small, mm -hmm. right? So you want to be purchasing this at closer to 35, uh, 35, 93, right? Oh, 36 yeah. bucks. Because Lawrence, no, one one of the reasons why we noticed that uh, I think the sell around the first uh, two quarters of the year is that the foreigners are actually selling. Right. So that, does it mean that for this particular stock, when the index falls, people are actually catching this? Okay. Yeah, it's one of the defensives. Really. Defensive. That's what you want. So one of the primary reasons why you want to come to the Philippines is it's actually just two things. Eh? Right. It's SM and it's Jollibee. Yeah. Right. So Jollibee just got hit because of a one-off on the yeah. uh, on the on the sugar yeah. drinks plus the uh, contracts with uh, the endo. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The endo. So. Um, but that those are those are one-offs. If you're really coming to the Philippines, it's Jollibee and SM. Normally, it's Jollibee, SM, and Ayala, right? right? So those those three that go hand in hand. Right? Um, so if you notice that uh, Jollibee, so far, Jollibee was the last to fall. Right, right. Jollibee right. was right. the very last to fall, and SM Prime didn't really fall, right? It didn't really fall. So um, it obviously shows the strength of of SM, right? So when foreigners come in. Okay, last stop, Sir Wanis, how about uh, AGI? Well, <coughs> finally, AGI has finally had some beautiful and darling moves in the last <laughs> few days. <laughs> um, but, you know, the reason for that really was because uh, this was the stock that was heaviest sold by foreigners. Okay. And they literally emptied their coffers of holding this all the way down to the low. And that's why it took an extended time. All the market was recovering this. They were still flatlining their towers. Look at the July lows. Uh -huh. yes. And it took time. And even down there, they were selling and selling and selling. Uh -huh. Now, just imagine a stock that's been, on the foreign side, it's been completely emptied of any stock position. Right. And now you have the, the locals who more likely start off the, the buying campaign. Right. And now the foreigners are coming back and says, I don't have anything in here. Uh, and right? And, and they're, they're, gonna have, they're forced by situation to be able to rejuvenate their position. And this is why you're seeing a very, very sharp upswing in prices. Uh, so I, I think that, uh, yes, we're coming to the first level of resistance. And I anticipate between um, uh, a level maybe closer to about 1450. I hope it can go all the way up to a little bit over 15, being the 61.8% Fibonacci level. Okay. But I think after that, you probably cool down and, and yes. take some rest and, and consolidation. But uh, oh. the worst is over here. So yeah. pullbacks for, for AGI are, are windows you're yes. waiting to get in. Right. Because as you've mentioned, Ubo sync offers. Yeah. There's no overhang. There is no more overhang. They, they wipe this up. No more. No more. OK. So uh, absence, uh, absence of seller. Absence of seller. Yeah, it's actually absence of seller. So everyone thinks that you need to have uh, buyers to, for prices to go up, right? But in actuality, if uh, absence of seller alone, yeah. prices can go up already. So okay. that's what needs to happen with this case. All right. So thank you very much for that. So again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to engage in our slide account. We will try to answer since we've uh, gone slightly out of time. <laughs> again, comment down below. We'll still award, of course, you know, try to get in touch with you if you win our contest of the most influential uh, guests that we have here in the web show. All right, so um, now that our community is one year old, gentlemen, um, is there any special uh, message you'd like to say to our community right now? <laughs> I think that was purposely chosen to, you know, just reflect the average age in this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there any special message, guys? Uh, because we are celebrating our birthday today, our community. So, any message? What well, um, uh, for those uh, fans who've been uh, frequenting our, um, of course, our social media pages, uh, do continue to be able to tune in. Uh, we will try to be able to push on more information for you to be able to keep you in tune with what's happening in your market. Uh, yes, yeah, send your questions in so that we can also make this uh, two-fold engagement rather than one, yes. one direction. Um, and yes, please uh, stay tuned to the other things. Of course, uh, Ed here has got lined up for you. And uh, I'd see to see you for the next year and hopefully the next five and 20 years. Yes. All right. Lawrence, any uh, yeah, um, message? Congratulations to the CUL Trading Alpha for their successful first year of uh, social media. And uh, I'm actually glad to be a part of the family. 
um, when I was invited here several months ago to help uh, help out with um, the Facebook group, I think that uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, keeps us all on our toes. Uh, I need you guys to keep asking me those questions. I'm here and I'll do my best to be able to help you guys as much as I can. Uh, and hopefully we can continue to push forward and we make a lot of money together. Right, okay, so of course uh, a birthday is not complete without cake. <laughs> All right, so I guess you can blow this cake. All right, one, two, three. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I think that's all we have for now. Of course, lifting the thoughts straight from our chairman. He always says, nah, of course, we are all raised differently. We, have all, we all have different views on a stock, on, on a show, or whatever. So that means that it's, it's almost natural that we have blind sides. Meaning that there are just things that we cannot see on our own. So we believe that a good community is key to good trading. So uh, if you, of course, you want to access the COL trading to Alpha, uh, open your COL financial account. Preferably open a COL premium account so you can engage our, our experts directly. And of course, uh, we'll be here to uh, make sure that you, have, you make the right trades and we learn together. Let's make money together. Okay, so for uh, uh, position traders or non-traders, we also have the wealth builders and for traders, I have a, I think we did, just didn't have time to ask this question, but I think it's also essential for traders to know about fundamentals, right? It's one of the oh, principles yeah. that you have to understand and to be able to have a grasp of before you can trade effectively. So it's also available in Facebook, the COL Wealth uh, Premium Wealth Builders, again, exclusive to COL Premium clients. Okay, so just a quick uh, a video of the benefits of a COL Premium account. Let's watch this. Here's what's in store for you when you become a COL Premium Client. Your Client Experience Manager will help you with any account inquiries and provide you with website and transaction support. They can also guide you in understanding the latest research by the in-house experts of COL Financial. At COL Premium, you'll also have access to exclusive events designed to make your investing journey better. Premium clients can also join our exclusive Facebook communities. COL Premium Wealth Builders. This is an exclusive group that talks about companies, fundamental analysis, cost averaging, mutual funds, and other content that will help you build genuine wealth. COL Trading to Alpha. This is another exclusive group designed for traders. Receive daily updates on the market and other content to help you trade better. Remember, the journey to a richer life is easier with a little help. All right, so uh, there you have it, the benefits of a COL Premium account. Uh, of course, uh, Kanina, we announced that we are going to award two of our most active uh, participants. So congratulations to Mr. Angelito Araneta and Mr. Christopher John Beray for participating. We'll be sending you a copy of this book that, uh, of course, our friend Wilson C., one of the greatest investors of our generation, of our time, and we'll send this to you. All right? So thank you very much for this. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. So again, thank you very much. Well, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Let's do this again. Yes. Thank, thank you very, very much, much, Lawrence. Fantastic. Great time. I hope you enjoy our YouTube live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next COL Trading to Alpha event.